Welcome back, y'all. Jason Michelle here. We're the Echo Nesters. If you've been following along with us, you know we have Bad Betty. She's our 2022 Winnebago Echo, built on the Ford Transit all-wheel drive chassis, as you see right here. This is not Bad Betty over here, but this is her cousin. So while we're here at the show, we thought we would share with you some of the features and a little bit of what Winnebago is doing now with the 2024 Winnebago Echo Sprinter chassis. One of the first things you're picking up on probably is some ground clearance. We're going to go over that. And obviously the curvature and just the European design that Mercedes brings to the market. And I would like to just start with the headlights here. These headlights being an HID system are actually adaptive. And what that means is rather than the driver have to be distracted and worried about toggling through high beams, low beams with oncoming traffic, where I'm at, where I'm traveling, their camera is actually built into this vehicle. And as they see and sense not only people, pedestrians, cars, vehicles, and everything, the system inside is continuously adapting. One of the things that we loved when we actually spent three days in this vehicle helping do the launch of it was when we were on some of the back roads and kind of exploring, if you will, on OHV land, BLM land, and backcountry roads, and even some of the highways. The vehicle was very, very smart. The technology that Mercedes brings to the market and Winnebago was very, very smart in bringing this vehicle to incorporate their build on the back is all of the safety enhancements. And that's just one of them. So I want to step back here and give you an observation of the ground clearance you see here. Obviously, between the fender well and the tire, it is very, very generous. It was really, I think Winnebago did a great job coming out and just getting those method wheels straight, straight from the beginning, the get-go. These are actually a very desired wheel in the market. They're a high quality wheel. Typically a manufacturer, this is something that you would have to pick up aftermarket and spend some additional money on. They went ahead and took care of that for you. They went with the Hankook all-terrain extreme tire here. I think the other thing that I appreciate is the 215-75-18 tire. One of the enhancements there is being that this vehicle is fully equipped, if you will, and able to get off-road and out of the terrain and do some of the things that maybe a lot of us like to get out and do and find and explore. <clears throat> it comes right out the gate with an all-terrain tire. That again, takes it away from you having to drive it right off the lot, spend some additional money and pick up the tires and make that choice. I have a set of Hankooks on one of our vehicle, not promoted by Hankook or anything, but they are a great tire. As we're drifting around here and you're starting to see in the sidestep here, this is actually unique to Winnebago. This is something they build in-house. This is their design. What I love about the sidestep here you're kind of looking about at it here they've got some tie-offs some folks will tie off their bikes and or maybe their pet i caution you about tying off your pet you don't want to forget about the loved one there but you know there are folks that do that um and as we're drifting around one of the things you're going to notice is there's ample storage we're going to cover that in detail but just kind of give you an idea as you're looking into this box here go ahead and take them on in there shell very generous so let's say that you're in the adventuring mode mood you got some gear that you like to keep outside of the vehicle. Let's say you're into rock climbing, etc. That gear can be placed in here, very generous space. The other thing that I'd like to know, and we're gonna cover this more in detail, is as you're picking up on these two inch solid insulated doors with the cam locks, what happens is when you engage the cam lock, and I'm gonna show you zoom in here. As I'm pulling that in and locking it, you see it draws in. The benefit of that is when you're closing this door, it pulls in and creates a suction, a Loctite area that is IP66 rated. Sometimes when you're picking up lights and you're getting some outdoor access, or I shouldn't say outdoor, but vehicle accessories, they'll have an IP66 and an IP68 rating. I'll just briefly go over that. IP66 will take care of you and be watertight and waterproof at direct rains, direct hose impact, uh, solids coming right at you, an IP68 would be more submersible. In this case, we don't need submersible. This is not a submarine. So IP66 rating right there, I think is great. Aircraft aluminum design coating seal. I think Winnebago just took care of it right there. As we're drifting around, we have the step that deploys. You can hear in the background, there's a lot of folks excited right here. I don't think they're excited about what I'm doing right now, but you know, hey, I'll take it, right? As we drift back around, you'll see that there is more generous space here. Again, Nice sealed compartment, same cam lock design. The other thing that Winnebago did really, really well, and we'll let that uh, chime down, as you notice as you're turning the cam lock, they have these spacers here, and it offsets the cam right there, or I should say the lock from engaging against the body. That's going to protect the finish there. One of the other things you'll notice, the exhaust is deployed just in front of the wheel. 
And by uh, deploying that, <laughs> there is some excitement here at the show. Uh, yes. And what, but by doing that, when you're out in some different terrain and land, <laughs> what will happen is you're deploying, rather the exhaust be pinched or caught at the rear, you've got plenty of clearance here. You're not going to have that happen. Some of you might have some vehicles where you've collapsed that tailpipe. The other thing is you'll notice that it is a dually, an option out there on the market if you're not into duallys. Do not let that separate your decision right here. There are super singles that you can put on these vehicles. We can leave a link, go into more detail on that. And as we're drifting back around, I think what I'm going to do is step away and let Michelle grab a whole shot right here because there's some important things I want to cover as we're coming around here. As you'll notice, we have canopy windows and they're hinged. And what makes these kind of unique, and I'll use this one as a demonstration, as you want to engage the window, and just kind of change how much flow or air is coming in. It's pretty awesome. But the other thing is this actually from like, I would say a nominal rain, rain coming down and at you is going to deflect and keep that away from you. Unlike sliding windows, I, in my personal opinion, with our ownership on our 22 Echo, having the same window package per se, the canopy window, we love it. One of the reasons we love it is with the Air Max fan, which is obviously standard on these vehicles, you put that fan on 10, 20, 30%, you crack a window, you're going to get a lot of fresh air drawn in. So let's swing back over here. You'll notice that we have some 110 plugs right here, which makes it kind of nice. Let's say you uh, got to take care of some things on the outside. The other thing that you'll notice is that we have what some refer to as a cigarette lighter plug and also an adapter right there for your cable. Coming back around here, there are two 20 pound tanks that are typically stored in here. Easy access, nice generous compartment here. Uh, we have the same compartment in our transit. Quick, easy connect right there. And I would say it's simplified it. So getting the tanks in and out is pretty straightforward. It's not cumbersome. It's ergonomic. If you think about ergonomics on things, especially as people like me begin to age, <laughs> we want that to be part of our experience. Again, two inch door, IP66 seal rated right there. One of my favorite things is, and I love the fact that Winnebago went ahead and brought this on over to the Sprinter chassis and didn't change a thing, is the Truma Aquago heating system right here. Now, this is the tankless water heating system that's here. You'll notice that the cartridge right now has been removed. I have a video on that. Typically, the cartridge would go in here. It would lock into place. We would close it. The nice thing is, in the event, I should just go ahead and talk a little bit about this. Again, we have a video on it. Let's say you forgot to drain the system and the temperature dropped, you come back out and you're like, oh my goodness, I may have just destroyed my, let's call it roughly $2,000 element here. What will happen is if you look into here, I don't know if Michelle can get that, you can't see through there. However, if you could, there's what I would call like a little soft plug or a freeze plug. And what happens is if it freezes, that'll burst and let the water go out so that you don't damage the system. I just love that about what Truma has done among other things. We're gonna be talking more about the efficiency of this system in just a little bit. I think why that's important is a lot of us that are experienced with other RVs and manufacturers and other systems, one of the things that we kind of get uh, concerned about is the amount of LP use. That is very, very low on this. I'll give you an example, at 11,500 BTUs when you're using the Truma variant heat system, sorry, heating system, you're only drawing about, if I remember correctly, and I'll correct myself here in just a moment, I think it's around eight and a half ounces per hour. It's very low consumption. So moving, <clears throat> yes, moving along here, you have your quick connect port. What we tend to use this for is we have a trail fire grill. It's in a lot of our videos. We use that quick connect port, but whatever it is that you're bringing to the table, it's right there, simple, easy. We're gonna move back to the garage here. And as you can see, it is very, very generous. I'm going to climb in there just to give you an idea of the size for comparison. Um, talking about the size of the exterior garage as well as the storage compartments, there is roughly 64 cubic feet of storage. That is massive. So as you can see, I easily get into here. Let's say that Michelle happened to kick me out, right? What do they say? Um, well, you got to sleep on the couch, so to speak. <laughs> it's just like this. Now, I'm not encouraging to sleep in here. It's not safe, but I wanted to demonstrate how much space is in here. The other thing that you'll notice is we have a full pass-through door system here, but also we have some balloons on the back side. Got a, <laughs> got a lift here. 
Again, two inch doors, IP66 rated. The other nice thing about this is you might have picked up on, we got some 12 volt plugs, 110, simple on and off lights there. I actually like the fact that these are manually operated. There's a lot of auto features out there where you open the door, motion detected, and those are great as well. For me, I kind of like being more in control of that. The other thing that you'll notice back down here is it is a heated compartment. The nice thing about that is, let's say that um, you're a full timer and you're like concerned about, man, I have seasonal clothing, different things that I, I, I want to control the moisture, humidity levels on. You could add a little humidity, um, let's say detection device, a little, uh, I forget the name of it. We have one, but it's like a little gauge, if you will. They Bluetooth to your phone and you can control the environment. So let's say that you build out some of the storage in here and it's going to be more drawer dresser type system. Maybe your winter clothing is more stored here, seasonal. Or let's say that every now and then you like to go out on the town because in a vehicle like this at 24 foot, 6 inches, roughly 10 foot, 11 inches in height and only about 7 foot, 2 inches in width, you can get in and out of a lot of places. Michelle and I go in and out of town. We park in general parking lots with ease. So again, you're going to be able to get what you need in and out here. The other thing that we love about it is if you're out there and you're doing alternative adventure sports, etc., blow up kayaks, uh, paddle boards, bikes, besides the pass through in the lift here that actually has gas cylinders to help keep it up and enhance. I actually prefer that over it locking into place. So looking at some of the features here, you can delete the awning. I would not uh, recommend doing that. This awning is actually <laughs> Very nice to just give a little deployment here. And uh, I don't have my glasses on, but, and sorry about that. Far left. Far left. Oh, uh, you know what I have actually, we triggered it off so that uh, folks wouldn't play with it. We wouldn't club anybody walking through, but a generous awning, I believe it extends roughly 13 feet away from the coach, LED lit. And again, as you're just kind of taking a peek here, you're gonna notice it's just well-designed equipped. One of the things that I love about what Winnebago has done is if you think about where the window placements are, if you're concerned about security or people reaching in easily, I mean, it's gonna take a lot to get up there into, this is the sleeping quarters. Some folks may or not refer to that as a safety enhancement. It makes me, Michelle and I feel a little bit more comfortable in our travels. So we're gonna take a moment here and drift you around and we'll be right on back. So we're now on the driver's side right here. And you'll notice again, very consistent, uh, lots of different compartments going on here. So we're gonna start at the rear of the vehicle and give you just kind of the lay of the land, if you will. So again, I talked about pass-through doors, the rear, this is all the garage. It's been tied off for the balloon, so I can't open it all the way. But you can kind of see there, very generous. One of the things that you're probably picking up on here right away is this, Obviously, it looks like the water control system and where you would drop your gray tank, if you will. So I'll kind of go over some of the enhancements here and the things that I love. Let's say you're just getting ready to head out of town, get off on the road, and you're at home and you want to fill up, again, 50 gallons of fresh wire, water held on board here. 50 gallons. Quick feed right here. It's got a little overflow in case you're not managing it. It's going to let you know right away. Spitting out a little bit of water. And as that's one fill, you also have a fresh water inlet. I'll kind of give you an idea of why these two are separated in some respect. Let's say you're, Good morning, oh, we have somebody else talking. Sorry about that, y'all. We'll be right back. <laughs> so one of the things you're gonna pick up on is there's two areas that you can fill your 50 gallons of fresh water. Right here, as I said, you're at home, quick garden hose connect. And let's just say that you're pulling up to your favorite campground or an area that they actually have water, a potable water, if you will, and you screw your hose into here. And let's say it's about that time when you're getting ready to part, you've been using the resources at the campground, but now you're headed off to some more BLM, OHB, LAM, off-grid stuff, and you want your tank full. Right here, if you take a quick look here, simple, you turn that right there, we can go ahead and divert the water to the 50 gallons of fresh, fill the tank, disconnect, and head on the road. Again, why is that convenient? You're already connected. Rather than have to disconnect and feed here, it's more of a convenience thing. The other thing that's really nice is, let's say you got everything connected out here. You're running back inside. You know it's pouring down rain. 
And when it was pouring down rain, you chose not to deploy right here your bat wing awning, which we're going to talk more about the AccuCab or AluCab in just a little bit. You can hit the water pump from right here, take care of business, or you can go inside and do that. The other nice thing is, let's say that you just came back and you've been at the beach, you're all sandy, you're muddy, you've been out there on your all-terrain bike. We have a quick shower right here. Just like that, you can hit the water pump, hot and cold, up to 120 degrees of instant hot water right there. The other thing is, sometimes when you're pulling up, you've got some cable plugs. You're kind of looking at the lay of the land here. Fresh tank drain, fresh water drains, and right here is some winterization valves. They've actually changed this in comparison to the transit, and I'll give you a comparison view here in just a few moments. What I actually really like, and I think Winnebago just changed this in, on the newer models, they changed the ergonomics of the gray tank drain. What I mean by that is you'll notice it's slightly pitched. And on our models, ours is more straight up and down. And I think what Winnebago thought is if you're accessing here and you want to release the cap, open this up. This is removable right here. You drop your, your hose, if you will, and you pull your lever, or lever, if you will. Again, a lot of ergonomics considered here. I'm not really reaching too much here other than coming up to make my hose connection. One of the things I'll have Michelle pin around here to do, again, two inch door IP66 rating. But if you're concerned about it being all weather and this is where you house your water source, uh, there is heating right here. So this compartment is heated. As we drift around, you're going to pick up on that we have a 30 amp shore plug. Very nice. I'm not going to disconnect it. Obviously, we kill the power right here. This vent is part of the Truma Barrio heat venting system, the high efficiency system. I'm going to go into details on that once we get into the inside. Again, it's my favorite system. As we drift around here, when you first pick one of these up, you're going to get three choices. I'm going to start with the first choice. It's coming out of the factory with the 2500 Onan generator right here. This one pulls off of the propane tanks. This is another high efficiency unit. I'll give you the specifications on that in just a few moments. As you drift down here, you're going to notice this pump. Some folks call it a, a whale pump. We call it a gulper pump. What it does is because our gray water holding tanks are up here insulated, if you will, in above the ground, not affected by ground temperatures and or freezing, this pump is designed to pump your gray water straight up into that 51 gallon tank, which I think is genius. I also like the fact that it's in its own compartment, it's sealed away, which is going to actually en enhance the, I'm going to call it the decibel levels, or and not enhance, but lower what you're going to hear from a decibel rating. Because being outside here, when that kicks on, you're not going to hear it so strong inside the cab. I love that. Oh, we don't want to forget. It's going to sound awkward. I believe this is one of my favorite things. Right here is the cassette toilet. Now, what is a cassette toilet? We have a whole video on what this is all about. This is five gallons of your personal waste. <laughs> and uh, if you like, and you want to be a little bit more incognito about it, you can make it look like a suitcase or a little pull along, etc. Collapses back down. You'll also notice here on where you discharge or dump, this actually is a measuring cup. So if you're using particular chemicals or treatments in here, you're worried about measuring them off. It's all built in. If you were to do this, again, we have a whole video. Pretty simple, straightforward. I love it. Some folks debate, we'll say, black tank versus the cassette. I can kind of go over a little bit more of my preferences around that in just a little bit. But bringing you back around to where we have our Lithionics battery right here, 320 amp hour um, right here sitting, room for two. We're going to talk a little bit more of that, some disconnects, a little bit more information on here, basically what's going on on the disconnects, the real is the solenoids. I think this is pretty straightforward and explanatory. But as I was talking earlier, when it comes straight out of the factory, this is just basically what you're going to get. Now, let's say that you want to do a generator delete. That's not something that you want to enhance your vehicle with. That is also an option. You can then put two lithiums in here, bring it up to about 640 amp hour battery capacity. And then there's a third option where basically you can get one single, and I believe it's a 620 or a 630 amp battery, a single lithium unit. The nice thing is these are Bluetooth monitored, controlled from your phone. There's a lot of technology enhancements we can discuss later on that. And again, drifting back, again, driver's side, you're going to notice the canopy windows. This is where the restroom is. We're going to go in there in just a little bit. 
Again, sleeping quarters here. I love the canopy windows. Again, I think what I love about them is they're just ratcheted. You can kind of adjust as you want, as you go. We're back on the driver's side. Again, I think Winnebago's proprietary sidestep, if you will, the design. I love this element here. Gives it a little bit of that rugged off-road look. Because again, she's coming out of the factory right now with 10 and a quarter inch ground clearance at the front and just about eight and a half ground clearance in the rear at the pumpkin, the differential. That's pretty incredible. So right out the gate, you can get out there, explore and get off into some off beaten paths, if you will. And the nice thing is if you do want to enhance suspension and you do want to do the upgrades, there is a lot of opportunity out on the market. So Michelle and I are going to swing back around over here and we're going to bring you on into the inside. So one of the things I forgot to mention, just because we have all the balloon coverage here at the show, is rooftop accessibility. There's a ladder there. This bumper is pretty solid. You can use it as the first step up to climb up. As you get onto the roof there, there's going to be three solar panels with roughly 530 watts. You're going to have two at 215, and then you're going to have a single 100 watt, if you will, solar panel. Again, 530 up top. Factory, again, you can delete it. I would not encourage it but you have the factory roof rails. Each one of the bars will sustain about 40 pounds of weight per bar. Just kind of give you an idea of what you can or can't load. Up there, you're gonna have accessibility to your high efficiency AC system, taking care of your solar panels. And let's say actually you wanted to enhance the vehicle with uh, different types of, let's say internet stuff, everything from satellite, etc. Winnebago is smart and gives a quick port in there where you can bring the wires in. We're going to get up there and show you a little bit more about that later, if we have permission to climb up here. We're not really supposed to. <laughs> so at any rate, let's go ahead and take you all inside right here and get you some of the features. So before we go inside, one of the things I really wanted to compliment Winnebago on, on both Echoes, is the platforms that they chose, the all-wheel drive platforms. We've talked a lot about that on our Winnebago Echo Transit. We've shown you what it is capable on and off the road, both equipped with aftermarket upgrades or uplifts, if you will, as well as straight out of the box. Some folks, we had a question yesterday, and one of the questions was, do I really need or why would I need the all-wheel drive system? When we're thinking of the all-wheel drive system, one way to think about it is on the Ford Transit, it's a considered an intelligent all-wheel drive system. It is managing a lot of factors while you're driving down the road. Oftentimes, you're completely unaware of. If you're straight down the highway, there's no slippage, nothing happening that's going to put you in a situation where, again, the intelligent all-wheel drive system has to kick in. It's going to be just basically operating as most efficient. When the all-wheel drive system does kick in, you're probably unaware of that. Most people aren't, but it's driving traction to whatever the wheel is, braking, etc., to manage that terrain the best it can to increase your safety, if you will. Again, the all-wheel drive system right here on the Sprinter is very, si uh, very similar. It's going to take care and manage itself. And I think that's what's beautiful right there is because they built these two vehicles to get off grid, to get you out there. But also, when you think of a Class C, let's talk about that for a moment. Again, I was bringing you inside, but I got kind of excited about something else. By definition, these are considered a Class C. The folks that own them oftentimes like to call them a B plus. It's kind of become our own name in the industry. And the reason is, is they are modeled a little different than your typical Class C. Like this would be your typical Class C. You can see it's a beautiful vehicle, a little bit more stout in size and then you, you come over here again if you're looking at this you're like how are these comparable in class c it's the rating that goes into it but again this is going to get you in and out of the city off and off the road or on and off the road and really enhance stuff so let's bring them on in shell we're actually really excited to share this with you it's shut down here at the show so we've got a little time to sneak around here and see what we got going on so as you notice this is the mercedes-benz Unfortunately, I'm not able to power it up for show regulations. The battery is not connected up here. But just to give you a little lay of the land, what you can see immediately is it's pretty ergonomically friendly, very comforting with the seats. There's a lot going on up here, but it's also very simplified. There's just over a 10 inch display screen. And what I love about this display screen and the rear view mirror here is they both sync with the rear view camera. And as you're driving, you're actually able to activate those cameras and see what's going on behind you. So in my mind, it adds a little bit of help to some of the blind detections. Maybe you're not seeing something in the mirror. Maybe you're still a little uncomfortable with the lane change. You're going to have full visibility here. The other thing that I really love is when you're looking at the dash, you'll see that there's basically three dash compartments here. We'll call them like little glove boxes. 
When you step into this one, it's actually wireless charging for both an iPhone and an Android. You have your typical USB-C charging points and USB. On this side here, nice little cubby for some personal items, wallet, maybe some sunglasses. The same thing on the driver's side. Maybe you want to access documents pretty quickly. You can do that. You have a couple cup holders, typical ventilation, a little bit of a tray here, which is always nice. Generous cup holders, as you see here. And as you're looking at the overall lay of the land here with all the controls, you'll notice immediately that the steering wheel actually is very well appointed. You can do everything from operating your phone, controlling the stereo, the radio, operating the systems here. The other thing is there's some features within here that I can't show you, but actually you can select and program this a little bit more to your liking need be. There's also the ability to say, hey, Mercedes, and if she was powered up here, uh, turn on the heat, lower the temperature. Basically, it responds similar to that of like a Siri, if you will. And as you're looking at the seats, one of the things that I picked up on, which was really nice here, is you grab here. And let's say you just need a little bit more support behind the knees. Maybe it's for circulation or just, let's say the way that your body's built. Maybe you're a little taller person than myself. The other thing is seats here are all power driven easily accessible right here at the door which i think is nice because what you're able to do is keep your hand on the wheel let's say we need to adjust the seats and i'm kind of making the pivots here i'm not having to switch arms here i can be very consistent with my left hand and if you're on the passenger side it's pretty much the same so let's go ahead and step back to the back and again this is a brief overview there's a lot more detail to share if i could power it up we sure would we do we want to just kind of give you a fun overview so one of the things that I love about the lounge slash dinette area is not only is the table swivel, it moves, it has a lot of functionality to it. It does remove itself. It's easily the store. Show, can we just show them really briefly where you can store it? Sorry, I removed a cushion. The table. The table. Right, so again, it just stores in here. It would clip in. It's padded and soft so you don't damage or scratch anything, which is really nice. Now, we're not going to change every configuration right now of the bedding system but one of the nice things is and i better clip this back up before we go is let's say that you want to be a forward facing passenger and this table were removed one of the things that you would do is just pull the cushions out of the way just like so raise the table which is actually pretty straightforward as you're raising it and again that table would not be there you're bringing it up locking it into place setting it down you would just simply pull this back cushion switch it over and again if you want to extend the table and this table wasn't here you could do that workspace very convenient it's actually incredibly comfortable it's actually very comfortable you can legally seat four we've got seat belts on both sides but again if you want to just drop it back down out of the way it's lift pull up set her down and i'm trying to be very cautious here because somebody actually made a purchase of this vehicle and we want to respect their new purchase so i'll just kind of put the cushions back the other thing that happens is this table becomes a platform and at the end here uh, let me go ahead and put that back where it goes there we go you get about a 30 32 by 78 inch lounging area which is pretty generous the other thing that michelle and i had the opportunity to do with a friend yesterday when we were chatting is there was two of the gals that were sitting on this side and Shell and I were sitting on that side. So there were four adults right here. We could have easily spun these chairs around and had six people comfortably sitting, enjoying a snack, a meal, friendship, maybe playing some cards, etc. As you're looking around, you can already see it's very generous on the space. Lots of storage up here. This is the thermal blanket. A lot of folks will store their thermal blanket right in this compartment. What is a thermal blanket? It clips right around here and it isolates the cab, if you will, from the living quarters. This bank blanket, if you will, is a game changer in controlling the environments in the cab, or I should say separating the cab, if you will, from the living quarters. Because remember, we have double pane windows here, four season box, over six R value of insulation at the floor, over 14 R value in the ceiling and over seven at the walls. But window safety glass, if you will, has no real R value to it per se. It is not designed to control the climate, although there is some UV protection there. So this is why in extreme heat, cold, etc., you could use the thermal blanket and block that area off. That's a great of course, there is also window shades and covers that you can adapt to. One of the other things you might be noticing is it has entertainment center. 
This option is not something that is re that you're required. You can do a delete on this. Picks up a little additional storage. Both sides of the storage here are pretty spacious. This side here happens to have some plugs and ports, 110 USB, and some things for cable, et cetera, satellite. The other thing you'll notice is, again, we have a lot of storage. In this case, somebody enjoys reading. And so as we're stepping back over the space, I'll switch with Michelle real quick. We have additional storage above the refrigerator right here. All of our controls are laid out here. They're very simple, easy to manage the touch screen. You got everything from your tank levels, battery levels, temperatures within the tank, turning on and off the water system, powering up the generator. And it gives us a little idea that's about 78 degrees in here. It is a little warm today. Um, refrigerator right here is very generous. I, that is a very deep and spacious, free, spacious freezer. A little tongue twisted there. Adjustable shelves pull out. Uh, we have the same one in our Transit Echo, and it takes a lot to fill it up. It's actually very generous. As you're moving over here to the kitchen, you'll notice that there is a lot of storage in the drawers. They're full depth. There are three of these. This one that's choosing to keep the induction oven in. Uh, no propane stove here. Again, just induction. The other thing you'll notice on the sink, very generous in its size. And what Winnebago thought about is giving you a couple of cutting boards. Maybe you're gonna use these as your charcuterie trays. Is that how you say that, charcuterie? Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and place those back where they go. Sorry about the noise. And we're back in business. Actually a little easier than that. Typical sink out layout, convection, if you will, microwave. The placement here, also a little bit more storage here with a little bit of a lip. I'm not sure I would put my induction oven up there. I'd be more concerned maybe it could come out, but some folks may do that. Adjustable shelves and cabinetry here. If you needed anything that you wanted to maintain power to, there's also 110 just up above. And of course, typical under the sink, plenty of plugs, water filtration system. We'll shut that down. Now, as we're drifting to the back end, what I'm going to refer to as the sleeping quarters. Basically, here's kind of what you've got going on, both passenger and, if you will, driver's side. Very generous closet. But some folks have actually built out drawer systems within these, and both sides are pretty uniform and unique. Take a peek in there. You also have a drawer on both sides, pretty much full depth, very generous in size, and they latch and lock down. And we have the flex bed system. We talk about this in some of our other videos if you want some more information on that. But just kind of give you, again, a brief overview of what's going on back here. I'm going to go ahead and lay down here. There's a gentleman that works for the team uh, at McLean's, and he is six foot five and about 240. And he was in here no problem. If you look, I've got, what, about a foot at the end? There's a lot of room. It is very generous back here. But let's say that you wanted to convert this into a little bit larger sleeping area. One of the things with the flex bed system, which is very unique to Winnebago, is this is also doubles as, I'm going to call it a nightstand area. Solid platform, a couple of little cup holder areas and places for jewelry, watches, etc. But in the event that you want to increase the bed size, you would take this, flip it on down, set it in. You'll hear it kind of lock down onto the platform here. Once it's locked down and you can hear that, there's a lot. Oh, goodness gracious, this is big. Yeah. I feel like this is definitely bigger than a queen. We'll include some measurements there. The kind of peeking around, I want to just kind of share with you what it looks like back here. Again, you've got upper cabinet storage, 110 plug-in, USB, as well as USB-C. We've got basically our cigarette lighter plug, 110 again. And these are actually, I enjoy these. Michelle and I actually use ours quite a bit. And I'm going to pull this back up out of the way. The other thing that I want to share with you all in the new Sprinter, they actually put it, uh, put it, <laughs> installed, put it's a new word for us, uh, installed a rear heat vent. What's nice about that, besides that it closes, is you can draw heat back to this space pretty quickly. The ceiling, if you happen to be looking up here, this, the ductus system here is for the air conditioning, not to be confused with the heating system. But having that vent back here in the space is probably pretty much a big game changer. At least it would be for Michelle and I. And as we're looking here at our canopy windows, which use these ratchets right here, just kind of pick where you want things to go, just like that, and close it. What I enjoy about these is you can deploy the window 
within, let's say the adjustments that you're comfortable with, kick on the air max fan about 10%. You can suck in quite a bit of air here. Again, very generous window size. It also doubles as an emergency exit. I also love the new shades that they've designed inside the new Echoes, I think 23 and later. And there we go. We can shut everything down and basically create almost a blackout. Very solid built right there. Very tight around the seams. As you're taking a look there, it's just feels like a good solid space now. It's very generous in size. I mean, I'm actually very, very impressed with what's going on back here with the size. And one of the things that also got changed, if I don't fall down, is typically here on your step light, it's motion activated. What Winnebago did on this particular year and model is they included a switch. So in the event that you're getting out of bed and you're really not interested in having that light at the stairs, you can manually shut it off. It, it does create a choice. We have a bathroom light switch. Very consistent here in one of our favorite features of the Winnebago bathroom here is you've got your cassette toilet, pretty standard there, a sink, additional switch for the water pump, beautiful window there, more additional storage, if you will, some toiletries. Actually, you know what's interesting? That's deeper than the Echo. I mean, the Echo, the Transit Echo. Yeah, there's a lot more space there. Well, the unit itself is about four inches total wide, or total deeper in its width. As you see, you pull around. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful shower. Design. It is a clever design. This is actually what really pulled Michelle together on our transit um, to making that final decision on the purchase, among other things, obviously. The other thing is, is that the central, uh, let's call it the air conditioning system in the transit is just here above the bed. In this case, it has been relocated just there in front of the bathroom area, the door, if you will, still fully ducted throughout the living quarters. So again, I think it's about 13,500 BTUs on this. Very, very adequate for this space. Uh, we have the same unit in ours and it'll knock the temperature down pretty quickly, especially if you're using the thermal blanket. So as you're walking around, you can see that Michelle and I are pivoting around here in a cabinet, or in a cabinet, in a cabin. We are tired, no. Uh, in here, you'll notice that there is very much ample room and space to move around. Privacy, curtain. The other thing I wanted to point out is I actually really love the placement of this window. It's just enough. I actually like the system that they're using here for deciding, if you will, what the depth is of the closure. Again, double pane. I think, if you will, the lay, the ergonomics of everything are very well appointed. Um, we have a very similar vehicle, obviously, the 2022 Transit version. This happens to be the Sprinter version. But as you're kind of peeking around, there's a lot of space, a lot of options. I think what's going to happen here is this really lends itself to inviting a few more guests or at least drawing some in. So I think we've covered just about everything we could really get into, if you will, some of the, I don't wanna say the science, but actually some of the technical details of these things, but we can share links for that. We can also share some of the uh, links for Winnebago so that you can kind of explore that a little bit more. But we're very familiar with this chassis and this particular platform and the vehicle itself. So if you have any questions or comments or you wanna see or hear something different, please leave it in the comment. Again, we just wanted to kind of give you a general layout of things and what to expect. So if you have the opportunity, I would highly invite you to come check out the new Sprinter Echo. The other thing I'd tell you, it does have, and I'm not sure if I shared this earlier, Winnebago did a great job on selecting the particular motor that's in here. It's actually the four cylinder twin turbo, but the high output version. There are two versions. Winnebago was very smart in this case, getting the high output version, a little bit more horsepower and torque. We'll leave the specifications in on that as well. So outside of that, we're going to head back out and uh, we're going to head home for the day. We've been here by 11, 12 hours, yeah. plus Good minus. Day. Yes, been quite enjoyable. Showing so this baby off. <clears throat> come on out. Mm -hmm. And we'll shut her down. Hey, y'all. So what I wanted to share with you is uh, you may know by now through watching some of our other videos, and I'm really glad that Winnebago stuck with this. We love the Truma Aquago system, and we love the Truma variant heat system. If you will, the main control panel is right here. And as you can see, in most respects, it is pretty simple and straightforward. One of the things I love about that is it's not complicated. It's not overstated. Sometimes less is more, especially when it comes to electronics. So it's not a touchscreen, which I'm actually happy with because it's not going to be something that's going to fail. You basically have your button here, and we show a lot of videos. And once you see your cute little echo right there, you push that button, you can dial up the temperature accordingly. 
let's say you like it 82 degrees, I think I would melt. Push the button back in, it's gonna activate. We're gonna roll over here again with the rotary dial. We see the little fan, push that in. There's an auto setting, night setting. And there's another setting called boost. The boost is gonna kick in once the system's ignited. And that's one of the three stages, if you will, of the Truma Vario, excuse me, system. So clicking back over here, this happens to do with our tankless water heater. We have comfort and eco. Michelle and I usually go to the comfort. We dial ours up to 120 degrees. But again, you can pivot between 95 and 120 degrees. You push the button back in, pretty simple. And again, you could rotate back out. This has to do with your propane tank levels. You might be wondering what this little cautionary sign is here. Basically, it's telling us that we have an error code. Truma did a great job with all their error codes to tell you what's going on and what's happening here. In this case, we don't have propane on board. We got no water source, so it's telling us, hey, I can't fire up. There's something going on here. Please check the error code. We've got another error code up here, appearing. I love this system because most of the time that you'll find is it's either user error or something has not been connected properly, again, by an owner. The other thing that you'll notice as you see these vents here, I want to caution you. As you're sleeping, you do not want to suffocate any of these vents, the ventilation, if you will, intake system. That will affect the heating system. Sometimes we get a lot of uh, different feedback or calls, or if you will, Facebook messaging and also on YouTube, asking us some questions about the Truma system. And usually when I walk through the error code, we do a hard reset, which maybe we should talk about right now. Let's say that we went to clear all of our error codes and we know we've done everything. The system's still telling us we got some things going on. I can go over here right to this wrench again. I'm just turning the dial slowly and I'm at the wrench. I push the button in. I'm gonna dial right over here to reset, push the button in. One more time, it's gonna initialize, it's gonna reset the system. It's gonna clear those error codes. It's gonna clear them assuming I have taken corrective action, if you will, on whatever the error code said, and I've taken the measures to correct it. So again, it's simple, it's straightforward, it's very, very efficient system. We love it. I'll leave some more details, I'll leave some links to Truma. So if you're looking at different vehicles, different RVs, class B, class C, and you're kind of comparing that, I would say pay close attention to the heating system and the particular units you're looking at. Truma has been around over 70 years in Germany, and I wanna say this is their 10th anniversary here in America. I think they know what they're doing. So we'll let y'all go. I'm gonna step back outside. And I think as we said earlier, we should probably head out. <laughs> That's two times we were heading out. Yes, go ahead. Oh yeah, one more thing. So anyways, it's been a wonderful day here at the show. We've enjoyed it. Um, you might hear it in our voices. We've been talking to so many people that were so excited to see these side by side. I would say, depending on your lifestyle, your needs, what you're gonna be doing, both of these four season capable vehicles with the all wheel drive system are gonna suit your needs. We love ours. Um, I know one of the questions that's gonna come up probably, and I'm gonna struggle to answer that fully is, if you had to make the choice again, what would you pick? Well, ask the question, I'll see if I'll answer that one. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. Click the button, yeah, thank you.